This week, the Australian dollar traded from just below 76 cents towards 77.50 before being knocked back by domestic data. International factors had a limited impact. China third quarter GDP was steady at 6.7%. Some had been looking for a stronger number as the Premier had been saying that growth was stronger than expected, especially in the third quarter. Markets, meanwhile, were somewhat disappointed by September industrial activity. It was softer than the previous month, despite strong imports of commodities such as oil, iron ore and coal. The third and final US presidential debate also had limited impacts on financial markets. On Thursday, Australia's labour force survey showed that the unemployment rate fell to 5.6% in September from a revised 5.7%. This, however, was driven entirely by a fall in the participation rate, with jobs falling by 10,000. The fall in full-time jobs more than offset the gains in part-time. Markets had been expecting a gain of 15,000 jobs overall. While some of the weakness could be explained by statistical noise and sampling errors, Overall, we see this as a soft update. Weak employment outcomes seem to be leading to discouraged workers, with male participation falling, especially in the mining states of Western Australia and Queensland. The Aussie quickly fell half a cent in response to the release and then continued to extend losses. Market pricing for an RBA rate cut in November rose to above 15%. Insight on RBA thinking this week, through the minutes, as well as Philip Lowe's first speech as governor, showed that they saw the employment picture as mixed. The RBA noted that there was spare capacity in the labour market, as indicated by the rising underemployment rate. The October meeting minutes surprised us by putting emphasis on CPI for the September quarter. The statement had repeated familiar language as well as a neutral outlook, so we had not put much weight on Q3 inflation. We see a November rate cut as unlikely given our outlook for inflation next Wednesday. Westpac expects 0.9% quarter on quarter or an annualised pace of 1.5%. We see core at 0.4% quarter on quarter. Most gains should come from food, housing, mostly by utilities, as well as recreation. So this release, as well as continued support from commodity prices, should keep the Aussie trading above 75 cents. On the top side, we see the Aussie trading to perhaps about 77 or just above. We'll speak to you next week.